y'all, it's Caitlin, and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I want to share with you guys what I did to get rid of my lichen planus. There is no one fix all solution, so this video is just solely to share you, with you guys what I did to get rid of mine, and hopefully this video will help you guys come up with a way to cure yours. This video is not about how to get rid of dark spots. This video is solely about how to cure the lichen planus and get it to go into remission. But before we get started, please give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. So in February of 2018, I noticed that I had what I thought was a mosquito bite on my arm and it was one on my belly button because it was itchy and it just looked like a mosquito bite. So I literally thought nothing of it. I was just like, dang, how'd I get bit by a mosquito? So the next day I wake up and I have a few more little mosquito bites on my arm in pretty much kind of the same area, both on my, all on my forearm. So by this point I realize it's not a mosquito because at some point I would have seen a mosquito in my room flying around. So by this point I realize it's not a mosquito and it, I'm thinking like it, I got some sort of rash or something. So I book a doctor's appointment. The doctor who I saw pretty much had no idea what it was and she recommended me to a dermatologist. And the dermatologist that I went to, he was like, oh yeah, that's lichen planus. I've seen that before. And he was saying lichen planus has no known cause and it has no known cure. And it usually goes away on its own in about like six months, give or take. So he says like, you just have to wait it out. So I'm like, oh, okay. So of course, naturally you do what the doctor says because he's supposedly seen this before. But as I'm waiting it out, this stuff is coming faster and faster and faster and I'm getting more and more and more like they're multiplying by this point by the hundreds like I could literally look at my arm and watch bumps just start to form but before all of this started happening I was like really anemic so I went to the doctors and then they got some blood work drawn and they saw like oh you're really anemic just get some iron pills and get some B12 pills so that we can increase your iron levels and then you should be good. So of course, two months later, this starts happening. So I'm trying to tell the dermatologist like, hey, uh, this is like my medical history. The only thing that has changed in my routine or my diet has been me taking these iron pills and me taking these B12 pills. So maybe that has something to do with it. Like, you know, you're just coming up with all of these theories as to why this is happening and you're just trying to shoot him at the dermatologist like maybe it could be this well maybe it could be this maybe it could be this and every time you shot him a theory he's just like no 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 it can't be that nope it's not that nope it's not that and you're just like okay so you know everything that it can't be but you don't know everything that it can be like he, he never told you oh you know it could be this or it could be this but when you say hey maybe it's this and this nope 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 it's not that it's not that so you're just like so how do you know what it's not but you don't know what it is so of course his solution is just to wait it out like he literally just wanted to do nothing basically his solution was wait it out he didn't want to do like any studies or any tests he's just like oh you have like complainers and it is no cause no cure and you're just like so you're not gonna try to figure it out but he always made sure that he booked me with another appointment to come see so that he could look at me and say oh I was still going on a rule like that's literally how he was y'all so of course at one of my appointments by this point it's like June or July and by this point it has spread everywhere because keep in mind y'all every day it's spreading I'm getting more and more and more of these bumps so by June or July it's like March, April, May, June. It's like four or five months by this point of this stuff just spreading nonstop every day, multiplying. So by this point, it's on my arms, it's on my stomach, and it's on half of my back. It's weird how this stuff was coming, y'all. So at this appointment in like June or July, he once again is like, oh, wait it out, it goes away on its own. And I'm like, no, I'm not waiting anymore. You need to do something. Because by this point, it has covered my whole body and it is spreading faster and faster. Like initially, every day, you just get a few and a few but the longer it went on the faster it started to spread so I'm like no I'm not about to keep waiting because it didn't even look like keep in mind this is four or five months later and it didn't it was spreading so fast it didn't even look like it was working its way out of my system like it, it seemed like it was coming harder and stronger so I'm like no you need to do something you need to check my blood you need to give me a skin biopsy and you need to give me some sort of medication or something and he didn't want to do the skin biopsy because he's like oh I know what it is it's like in planets and I'm like I don't care I want a skin biopsy just just do it I want I want something on paper basically so he does a skin biopsy and he prescribes me prednisone and prednisone is an immune system suppressant it's a steroid so when you're taking steroids you can't be on them long term you can only take them for a very short period of time so when he gave me the prednisone I think I took it for like four or five or six weeks something like that and initially you start off with a high dosage of prednisone and then you keep 
lowering the dosage because you have to wean yourself off of it because that's just what you do with steroids so initially when i started taking prednisone let's let's say you start taking three pills and then next week they'll say okay lower it to two pills and then next week they'll say lower it to one pill so when i started taking prednisone and i was taking a high dosage it stopped it was not spreading anymore it wasn't itching anymore and so i'm like yes it's cured but then when i lowered the dosage it slowly started to like start trickling and breaking through the medication so i'm just like oh my god and then when i lower it again it's just coming back and then when i'm off of it it just came back full of flesh. it just seemed like it came back faster than it was before i got on it so i go to the dermatologist and i'm just like it's breaking through the prednisone it's coming back full flesh and, and guess what he says you gotta wait it out he's like oh prednisone doesn't work immediately like in order to get the full effects of prednisone you have to you still have to wait a little bit longer after you've taken it and then it'll start kicking it out of your system basically so of course i'm just like oh, okay like i've never been on a steroid before i don't know how prednisone works so of course you're gonna listen to what the dermatologist says but by this point i'm just like okay this dude has no idea what he's talking about because by this point it's coming back faster than it was before i was on it like it's it does not seem like it's slowing down even with time the dermatologist who i was with he kept trying to make it seem like oh it's not a big deal at least you're not dying it could always be worse and it's like so what dude like do what you're supposed to do and fix my skin so by this point i think he's on bs he clearly has no idea what he's talking about and he's not even like taking my my situation like seriously or like taking it with some sort of urgency and the thing that kills me about doctors and not even just doctors but just people in general it could be a hairstylist whatever the thing that kills me is people never say you know what this is out of my league. I think you should go to somebody else because I, I, I just don't know. Why? Because nobody wants to miss out on getting a check. So it's like, mm, I'd rather you suffer and you just keep paying me every month to come to the doctors and me do absolutely nothing about it. And sometimes it almost feels like it's deliberate. Like, do you want? Do you want to find a cure? Because there were literally some appointments where I'd come to and it's just kind of like, oh, it's still spreading? Oh, <laughs> come back in a month and let's see how it is this month so you just like at that point i'm just like okay i'm done with this dude so i book an appointment to a whole new doctor or whatever so when i get with the new doctor by this point i meet the new doctor and i think like september and this new doctor of course he wants to collect his own data and stuff so i get my blood work done again and he puts me on prednisone so when i got on prednisone of course the same thing started happening when i was on the high dosage it was working and then as soon as i started tapering the dosage off it was coming back full-fledged and the reason why that was happening is because prednisone is an immune system suppressant so lichen planus is basically a negative response that your immune system is having to your body your immune system is supposed to attack foreign objects because it's trying to keep you healthy but in my case my immune system was confused and my immune system was attacking my skin because it was looking at my skin as a foreign object so my immune system is attacking it trying to get rid of it but it's like dude you're attacking the wrong thing so that's why when i got on prednisone and it suppressed my immune system basically stopping my immune system from even working that's why the condition stopped because my immune system isn't working anymore but then when i got off of prednisone my immune system is coming back and it's starting to work again so it's coming back and it just starts attacking my skin again because it was looking at my skin as a foreign object and was trying to protect me from myself so the previous dermatologist that i went to the guy who i stopped going to so he took my blood work i think twice and when he took my blood work he only took a vial of blood so in the results that i got the results came back fine so when i went to my new dermatologist my new dermatologist of course he wants to start doing his own test and he just wants to see stuff for himself so he put me back on prednisone and then he drew my blood too and when he drew my blood he drew like five or six vials of blood like i said the other guy only drew one vial of blood so by the time i finished prednisone under his care and i come back to my next appointment we already had the results back from my um, blood work that he did so he read my results and he was like hey everything seems fine but it looks like your vitamin d is low so 
let's just give you some vitamin D and just see what happens. Let's just increase your levels. And I walked out of that doctor's appointment so discouraged because I was just like, oh my God, what is some vitamin D going to do? Like, I'm suffering over here. This stuff, it's by this point, it's like October now. And so this stuff has been spreading for months. I'm covered in it. And it was even, I had oral like complaints too, because by the time August came with this stuff just spreading and spreading and spreading, it eventually spread to my mouth. So not only did I have like complaints on my body, but I also had oral like in plainness where it's it's different in your mouth than it is your body because inside of my mouth it was just lacy white stripes and patches inside of my mouth and they just if I had like spicy food or like anything it burned and it eventually like it was just in my mouth and then it started coming out like started coming out of my mouth and I started getting the bumps on my lip and stuff so at that point I'm just like oh my god because I can cover my body but I can't cover my face like you you can see these bumps like on my lip now so by this point I am just like oh my god what is vitamin d gonna do this stuff is coming out my mouth like it's everywhere so of course i go and get the vitamin d because my vitamin d is low it needs to be increased and literally he prescribes me 10,000 units of vitamin d it was a couple pills like i think it was like five pills and in each pill it had 10,000 units of vitamin d in it literally i get home i take the first pill it stopped spreading it didn't stop it fr from spreading completely but it drastically slowed down the spreading because it was spreading like crazy and super super fast so when i took the vitamin d you can see how drastically it just slowed down so then a week later i take my next pill slows down more a week later i take my next pill um and a few of the bumps are starting to go away they don't necessarily flatten they just they just go away and what's left behind is a dark spot from where the bump previously was so at that appointment where I met with my new doctor he also when he prescribed me the vitamin D he also recommended me a dermatologist that he knew that deal who, who's dealt with lichen planus cases before and he wanted me to go to that dermatologist because not only has he dealt with lichen planus cases before but he had the UVB treatment and he wanted me to get the UVB light therapy treatment after my third pill is pretty much when I started doing the UVB treatment. Um, and so we know that the pill worked. We know it was vitamin D. I still had all of the bumps, but they were raised, but they weren't spreading anymore and they didn't itch anymore. So with the UVB treatment, you're supposed to get the treatment three times a week for a couple months. So I did mine three times a week for about two and a half months. I was very, very consistent. I have a skin playlist on my channel that pretty much talks about like my whole lichen planus experience, some products that I were using to get rid of lichen planus, um, and I have in that playlist a video on the UVB treatment, my experience doing the UVB treatment, and you can see me get the treatment done. So if you guys want to see it, then I'll link it down in the description box below. You guys can look at it after this video. But in non-technical terms, the UVB treatment kind of like zaps the bumps or like dries them out in a sense like you don't feel it it literally felt like nothing but after each treatment more and more of the bumps just started to just go down it just go away so it took about two and a half months of me getting this treatment for all of the bumps to completely be gone and what was left behind was just literally dark spots and hyperpigmentation scars in every single spot that a bump once was so that's how I got rid of my lichen planus and got it to go into remission was the vitamin D and the UVB treatment. And yes, as I was doing the um, UVB treatment, I was constantly just getting prescribed more and more vitamin D pills just because I had only originally gotten prescribed like five. So once I ran out of those five, he gave me more and I was taking those vitamin D pills to 10,000 units vitamin D probably for like two years every week for like two years I was taking those vitamin D pills and then when I was doing the treatment I was still taking them every week as well now listen carefully because if what I did doesn't work for you then hopefully what I'm about to tell you helps you find your own solution to your problem so this is just me giving you my personal advice and things to be conscious of so when my lichen planus was actively spreading it was hard to see what foods you're eating that are making it spread faster or what products you're using that are making it spread faster because when you have a million bumps that are all actively spreading, you can't say, oh, it was this pizza that I was eating that was that's making it spread or it's this bread. Like, you know, it's, it's hard to tell when you're getting tens of hundreds of bumps that are showing up every single day. So when my lichen planus went into remission, 
all of those bumps were completely gone. Now that the condition is in remission, now I'm able to see what is making the condition flare back up and what am I doing that's making it stay calm. So I noticed that every time I ate something that was citrus, whether it be a mandarin orange cup, whether I ate an orange, whether I had some orange juice, some lemonade, uh, a pineapple, like anything that I ate that was citrus, it would make the bumps come back and they just rise and they come back in the same spots that they previously were because like I said, these dark spots were left behind so I could see like a bump rising on the dark spots. And then if I stopped eating it, like say I had a mandarin orange cup and then I noticed that the bumps would rise and they would itch again, I would not eat anymore and then a couple hours later or 24 hours later the next day, they would be gone again. And then if I had like some orange juice, it would make them come back up and then if I stopped, then they'd go back away. And even I went to a Sox game before and I forgot and I just got lemonade and vodka and then the lemonade made the bumps come back up again. And then I stopped drinking it and then eventually they went back down. Not only would I get those bumps, but I would also get diarrhea. Like literally, I would, if I had a, a cup of mandarin oranges, I would go to the bathroom like literally an hour later and I would have to go to the bathroom bad like immediately I would go to the bathroom and I would literally diarrhea out all of the citrus that I had and I was never allergic to citrus before in my life like I love citrus fruits always ate pineapples always had tomatoes like I love citrus and the crazy thing is when like implants started happening like I don't know I just started binge eating like those little cutie oranges because I was sad and I don't know like I was just eating a whole bunch of cutie oranges and then of course you know everybody's like oh oranges are great for your immune system citrus in general is great for your immune system so I'm eating these oranges like just eating them up so keep in mind lichen planus is a confused overactive immune system so while I'm eating this citrus I'm just making my immune system stronger so by making my immune system stronger I'm making it attack more so I just stopped eating citrus for a while um, and you know I'm at this point I've been in remission for a little over two years so at this point I can have citrus and nothing will happen but I can't binge eat citrus because if I binge eat citrus like if I eat just a whole bunch of grapefruits or a whole bunch of oranges if I have too many then I'll get diarrhea the bumps won't come back but I will get diarrhea and that's just a sign to me to hey you gotta chill out so i just want to recommend to you guys to watch your diet because maybe you've developed an allergic reaction to something that you have always been using so i would suggest you guys get an allergy test another thing that you shouldn't do is scratch please avoid scratching no matter how itchy it is do not scratch if you scratch if you exfoliate if you create any type of injury to your skin your body goes into fight mode because remember you have an overactive immune system it is fighting it, it's looking at your skin as a foreign object and it's trying to fight your skin so when you scratch yourself you're creating injury to your skin and your immune system is trying to repair that injury even though it's not a real injury like i had scratched my back and got just a little welt on it literally the lichen planus formed along like it was just bum 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 forming along the line of the welt when i got my skin biopsy done he had to cut a piece of my skin off and then of course he stitched it back together so he can do the biopsy and my stitches i started getting lichen planus on the stitches because i have an injury so if you currently have lichen planus that is not in remission it's best to not even work on the dark spots do not exfoliate don't do anything pertaining to trying to get rid of the dark spots until you get your lichen planus in remission because a lot of the stuff that you'll try to do is only going to make it worse and then last I would recommend you guys get your blood work done. Now let me explain something. When you get your blood work done, they can test for a million different things. Like each vial of blood that they pull is a different test. Like a vitamin D test requires its own vial of blood. If you want to get your red blood cells and your white blood cells looked at, 
those require their own vial of blood. Like, it's not just one vial of blood that can test for every possible thing in the world. Like, each vial that they pull tests for a completely different thing. So, that's why when I was going to the first um, doctor and dermatologist and they were doing my blood test and I told you they were only taking one vial of blood, they were only testing for a specific Thing. When they were taking that one or two vials of blood, however many they took, they were testing and looking at my iron and my B12 or something, and they were fine. So that's why they were saying, oh, we don't see any problems with your blood. Your blood looks perfectly fine. But then when I went to my other doctor, he took six vials of blood. So he saw way more test results than the other people did. He tested for more things, and one of those things that he tested for was vitamin D. So that's why when he got my blood test results back, everything was fine except vitamin D. And that's why he was like, oh, looks like your vitamin D is low, let's increase it. Whereas the other people didn't catch it because they didn't test for that. When I had gone to the doctor to get my blood drawn, I got like six vials of blood drawn, and then this lady next to me literally had like 12 vials of blood drawn. So she was obviously getting tested for way more stuff than me. So what I'm saying is your doctor chooses what he's going to test you for. And you can also tell your doctor what you want to get tested for. Like say, hey, I want a vitamin D test. I want you to look at my iron. I want you to look at my red and white blood. Like you can tell your doctor what all tests you want to be run and then they'll just pull the vials of blood that they need for those specific tests. So the other doctor never would have known that my vitamin D was low because they didn't test for that. And that's honestly one thing that kills me the most is the solution was so simple and it was so easy to find. But due to doctors being lazy and careless and trying to save money probably that's not even theirs, you let this situation drag out far longer than it needed to. It literally could have been solved at the first appointment or second appointment had you just done had you just done the work you know like if you say oh we don't know what causes it when you do somebody's blood work why didn't you look for as many things as you could look for like if there's a million tests that you could take that all tell you everything about your body why do you choose one test and if that one test came back good then you're like, oh, you're cool, everything is fine. And it's like, dude, there's a million different tests that show you a million different things about my body and you choose to do one test. So my situation with doctors and dermatologists and just my health in general has really inspired me to be like my biggest health advocate. Like I'm literally always researching just about the body. I'm always researching about what different vitamins do to the body, what different foods do to the body, just everything. Like I'm really, really into just help now. Lichen planus is an autoimmune disease and with most autoimmune diseases, almost all of them, people don't know that they have an autoimmune disease until something triggers it to flare up. And that was my case. Lichen planus is probably something that I have always had. I was probably born with it, but I wouldn't know until something I do triggers and makes it happen. And then that's when you realize I've had something in me this whole time that was just waiting to be triggered. An example of that is vitiligo. So at my, um, at one of my previous jobs that I used to work for, my boss had vitiligo and he was saying that he didn't even get vitiligo until he turned 30. That's how autoimmune diseases are. Like you could have something right now and you'll never know until something poof triggers it to happen or you'll just never know, maybe it'll never get triggered, but that's literally how autoimmune diseases work. So I'm gonna post another video later on what I'm doing to get rid of my dark spots because this video is already long as is and I just feel like they should be separated and be two separate parts. So thanks for watching y'all. I hope this advice cures you or helps you come up with your own solutions to find your cure. Give this video a thumbs up if you're excited on my video on getting rid of dark spots and I'll see you guys in another video.